Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. I always like to invite people to hear about Jesus because he loves you and he said that he died on the cross for your sins because we're all sinners who fall short of the glory of God. But he said, I'm gonna pay the death penalty that you deserve and die in your place and offer you the free gift of eternal life and forgiveness because I died for you. If you wanna know more about that and how you can receive by faith that free gift of eternal life and forgiveness of all your sins, then stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background and you can hear a lot more from the scriptures about how you can be born again today by faith in Jesus. But for now, let's dive into the study. Day 173, teaching is light today. Proverbs chapter six, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and teaching is light and reproofs for discipline are the way of life. Solomon compared the commandment to a lamp and teaching to light. Previously, Solomon had commanded his son to observe Solomon's commandments. He then explained that the commandments function as a light. So Solomon's son must use the commandment as lights for his way through life. Previously, Solomon told his son to follow the teaching of his mother. By doing so, Solomon's son would benefit from that teaching because it is the light. The commandment and the teaching provide both the lamp and the light for following God's path through life. Reproof and discipline go together. Reproof means that someone informed you that your behavior fell below the acceptable standard. Discipline means that you strive consciously to live according to God's revelation. People may discipline their bodies to achieve better physical performance, but if the discipline does not produce godliness, it has no eternal reward. Discipline, number one, commandment. This verse describes commandment, which in the Hebrew text here is the word Torah, used frequently to describe the law from God. God revealed his commandments to men and expected them to follow his commandments. Each commandment is a concise statement of God's will. Number two, lamp. The commandment acts like a lamp in your life. Number three, teaching. Solomon had mentioned that the mother provided teaching while the father provided commandment. Number four, light. As the commandment provides the lamp, so the teaching provides the light. They function in tandem together. Number five, discipline. If you follow the light and keep the lamp lit, then you will walk in the way of God's discipline for your life and avoid the ways of darkness stumbling along. Number six, way. We live wisely in the family of God by remembering the reproofs of discipline are the way of lives. Number seven, life. We rejoice today because God cares about our lives and the ways we walk through our lives. Summary for today. We live wisely in the family of God by keeping our lamp lit, following the light, and living according to discipline as we walk through the way of lives. We live more wisely in the family of God by praising God for his commandments and guidance through life according to the discipline of God. We live together wisely in the family of God by worshiping God because he cares about every step that we take every day. Application for today. Today, we may live wisely in the family of God by walking in the light provided by our lamp, according to the discipline of reproof in our lives. Will you live wisely in the family of God today? By thanking Jesus that he leads us like a flock of sheep every day so that we walk in the light with him. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question, why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. 
Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good, or tried to do more good than bad, or I tried hard, or I've done a lot of nice things, and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works, that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry, and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin, and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sinned, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 6.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5, 8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you. The free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess too that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God and he died on the cross for me. 
You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. <laughs>